Today we're going to discuss yet another unusual supernova discovery that at the moment is somewhat difficult to explain and potentially presents astronomers with a completely new type of a supernova we've never seen before. An extraordinary astronomical event reported in this study, currently referred to as SN 2023 ZKD, that after months of investigations presented astronomers with a lot of unexpected discoveries, very likely suggesting a brand new type of an explosion triggered by a dramatic interaction between a very massive star and a black hole. And though originally detected in 2023, it essentially took two years to confirm that this was indeed a very bizarre event. And so let's talk about this in a bit more detail, but I guess first let's start with the concept of supernova, just so that this particular study makes a little bit more sense. And that's because the explosion of stars, or supernova, in reality is caused by a lot of completely different events. And though we usually see hundreds of them every single year, and they normally follow a somewhat predictable and somewhat common pattern, usually involving a sudden burst of light followed by a gradual dimming over weeks or sometimes months, the explosion itself can be caused by a variety of distinct phenomena, with each type of supernova showing a slightly different properties and even lasting for a different period of time. But in this case, SN 2023 ZKD, that happened approximately 740 million light years away from us, defied quite a lot of expectations and quite a lot of predictions, once again revealing a completely new mystery of the universe. And so initially this was found in July of 2023. As it is the case with most modern supernova, this was discovered by the automated facility from the Caltech known as ZTF, Zwicky Transient Facility, a telescope able to automatically detect changes in brightness and report them right away. And initially it appeared to be a fairly typical supernova, exhibiting a single burst of light, but the real story began to unfold once researchers tried to analyze this using a new algorithm, a new statistical tool based on machine learning known as LIES, Light Curve Anomaly Identification and Similarity Search. And here it was designed to scan for unusual explosions in real time, especially the ones that seem to stand out from other supernova. And while by January of 2024, Lice flagged this supernova as somewhat peculiar, which eventually resulted in a multi-month follow-up and a study that was finally published in August of 2025. And so here, as researchers observed this for several months and tracked the overall decline in brightness, they witnessed something somewhat unexpected. For some reason, the supernova rebrightened again, nearly reaching its initial luminosity 240 days after the first discovery. Basically, the supernova here had a very bizarre double peak. And to try to understand this unusual behavior, researchers analyzed archival data from a lot of previous observations, uncovering something even more extraordinary. This unusual system has actually been brightening for several years, even before the initial explosion. For approximately four years, this object was getting brighter and brighter. And this unusual long-term activity before a supernova is super, super rare, with this precursor being observed in two separate phases. During the first phase, that lasted for approximately 1500 days or just over 4 years, this unusual object was emitting relatively persistent and also somewhat powerful but not super powerful emissions in different frequencies. So basically this object was, for some reason, surprisingly bright, somewhat similar to a typical nova in luminosity. But then it suddenly entered the second phase that lasted for about 300 days before the explosion. And during this phase it showed a persistent brightening and also reddening with the luminosity increases by several times and the temperature decreasing to about 8000 Kelvin. And this was extremely different from any other supernova precursor observed in the last few decades. And so basically here this unusual object suddenly became even more powerful but less hot. And so these two distinct phases of pre-explosion suggested that the dying star was under extreme gravitational stress, and the most likely explanation was some kind of a compact companion. So obviously the most likely companion in this case would be some kind of a black hole. And right now this is the most likely interpretation. This unusual behavior is a result of a massive star locked in orbit with a black hole, with this binary system slowly losing energy as the separation between the star and the black hole decreases. And it's really the black hole's intense gravity that then starts to pull gas and dust away from the star and forms an enormous accretion disk that seems to be responsible for these initial emissions in the last five years. But crucially, the gravitational stress from the black hole then triggered the star's explosion before the star could be completely swallowed by the black hole 
in essence and in their partnership. And right now this is the strongest evidence we have that such unusual interactions can actually detonate a star. Here's roughly how this particular observation compares to some of the previous supernova in the last decade. With the alternative explanation, though I guess less likely explanation, suggesting that in this case the black hole completely tore the star apart before it could explode on its own. And so here what we're observing is what's known as a TDE, tidal disruption event, the event where the star completely gets shut apart, producing various types of emissions. And so the supernova-like emission in this scenario might have been generated when the debris collided with the gas surrounding it, causing an enormous thermonuclear explosion. But in either case, the ultimate outcome was the formation of some kind of a black hole left behind. And so interestingly here, it's really the larger star that was potentially trying to, at some point, swallow the black hole. But because the black hole is much more dense and contains the event horizon, even at a very small size of approximately 10 to maybe 20 kilometers across, it would be so compact and so dense that it would actually allow this black hole to get much closer to the star or even inside the star, disrupting it from within and causing it to explode. And so in this case, if the star was much more massive than the black hole, theoretically the star could actually pull the black hole inside of it, causing its own explosion. But obviously at the moment, exactly what happened is still a little bit unclear. But then there is also the question of this rebrightening. Mostly because this rebrightening also experienced a somewhat complex photometric evolution that the researchers now believe is linked to the interaction of this supernova ejecta with a lot of material from the star that was very likely released for years before the final supernova. Here this is usually referred to as CSM or circumstellar material. And so the first peak that you can see right here was the result of supernova blast wave colliding with the lower density gas. But the second delayed peak was very likely caused by a much slower but sustained collision with a much thicker disk-like cloud surrounding this object. And here that second peak happened approximately 220 days after the first peak. And based on the changes in luminosity, and based on how fast the brightness decreased, it even becomes possible to analyze exactly what seems to be happening around this object. For example, the very rapid dimming observed after the second peak suggests that the supernova ejecta very likely passed through this dense cloud pretty quickly. With the analysis of the property of this cloud, mostly through what's known as shock modeling, indicating a total mass of about 5 to 6 solar masses ejected during two separate mass loss periods, with one of them being about 3 years before the explosion and another one approximately 1 and a half years before. And the overall ejection rate was very fast, 4 to 7 solar masses per year, implying that whatever was happening to the star was essentially shredding it apart super quickly with these very eruptive sudden events as opposed to gradual release of material like we usually observe in stars that do not have a black hole partner and stars that usually emit a lot of mass. In other words, the fact that there were two massive eruptions and so much mass was released in the process once again confirms that there might have been some kind of a black hole involved that caused the star to suddenly lose a lot of mass. And this analysis was so accurate that it even allowed the researchers to calculate the overall velocity of the gas escaping the center. Here we have two different components, the low velocity CSM, moving at about 300 km per second, and actually enriched in hydrogen, also very likely ring-like in shape, and the high velocity CSM, moving up to about 2000 km per second, and very likely enriched in helium and bipolar in shape. And so here we have these two very large asymmetric components, once again implying that this was a binary system, and a binary system with a very powerful, very destructive interaction. And based on all of these observations and all of this analysis, this has now been classified as what's known as type 2N supernova. Here N denotes narrow. The presence of narrow hydrogen emission lines that seem to be produced in various supernova where the initial star loses huge amounts of mass before the explosion. With the overall conclusion from the study suggesting that this supernova involves a binary system undergoing an instability-induced merger, very likely between some kind of a massive helium core produced by a star over 30 solar masses initially and a smaller black hole companion of approximately 10 solar masses. This whole process described in four separate steps. First, for many years before the explosion, the system seems to undergo some kind of an unstable mass transfer, with the massive star shredding huge amounts of gas, leading to super bright emissions we usually refer to as super Addington luminosities. This forms both hydrogen shells and helium shells, 
with slightly different shapes. Then, during the final year, the runaway accretion into the black hole leads to a binary system where the two objects start to orbit closer and closer. And this starts to increase luminosity of the entire system as the objects get closer and closer to each other. Then, in 2023, we observe the explosion. The primary star merges with the black hole and explodes as type 2 and supernova. With the supernova first reaching the polar axis material, containing a lot of helium and produced during earlier outbursts, and producing the first photometric peak. Here this is confirmed by the observations in July of 2023. But then we have the second rebrightening period, where the supernova ejecta collides with a second shell 224 days afterwards. But following this, the transit rapidly dims as the ejecta passes through all of these shells and moves beyond them. And right now, pretty much all of these observations seem to match the analysis from the study, basically presenting us with a slightly different type of a supernova we've never seen previously. Although here I guess what's important to mention is that, now that we know that such supernova exist and now that we know what to look for, in the next few years there's a very high chance we'll actually be seeing thousands if not tens of thousands of such events, because Vera Rubin Observatory just began its operations and technically is designed to discover so many more of these objects, and we'll very likely see quite a few by early 2026 even potentially discovering additional rare supernova we've never seen previously, helping us understand how these really massive stars live, how they evolve, and how they eventually explode. Eventually refining our models of star evolution and helping us understand precise mechanisms that trigger these extraordinary stellar explosions that eventually produce new stars. And so because of this new telescope, and of course because of studies like this, this is actually a pretty exciting time for supernova science. We're now entering the era of automatic detections and even automatic analysis using new machine learning tools, which will help us catch a lot of these events at all times and even identify them automatically just minutes after the initial detection, something that previously would take months if not years of analysis. But when it comes to these new supernova events, this is of course not the only unusual event we've discovered in the last few years. You can actually learn about some other discoveries in some of the previous videos in the description, and we'll of course discuss more in some of the future videos. And well, until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.